males wanting to go to war. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, you did have alpha males wanting to go to war, and um, I thought leadership aspects of this film were fascinating. Um, I felt that the true leaders were scientists and linguists and others, you know, other people that are maybe considered in the middle of our society, not considered necessarily the, at the top or the bottom. They were the true leaders. I mean, and but the, the leaders that were actually in charge, that actually had the power and resources, were aggressive. They, you know, um, they talked about, they, they gave the aliens a framework of Mahjong, a conflict-based zero-sum game mm -hmm. uh, framework for, for talking to them so that a lot of the responses became uh, oppositionally defined or conflict-defined responses. Um, and so it was a struggle for these middle leaders, the true, I would say the true leaders, the scientist and the linguist, they had to often disobey. She had to take her suit off. She had to go back to the ship even when she was told she shouldn't. She, it, she wasn't placed in a position of leadership, but she was the best leader, and so she had to fight to be that leader. And I thought that was very interesting. And what the aliens were maybe ultimately wanting her to do, because they wanted her to switch to a non-zero-sum game. They wanted her to be cooperative and find the, all of the 12 messages and put them together rather than being conflict-driven and um, play, and thinking that they were being played against each other or things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The leadership aspect, to me, as we, as we were watching it, we kept pointing out, well, if they were here to kill you, they would have already done it. They would have yes. been staying yes. there for a month trying to communicate and get a message. It wouldn't have even bothered to enter your atmosphere no, or even like, your orbit, boom, you know, yeah. You know, yeah. It, it would have been like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Your planet will be destroyed in right, so right. much yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hyperspace, you know. uh, hyperspace bypass is coming through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so that, to me, was... It wasn't leadership at all. The very alpha, let's just go right. out and fight them and... Yeah, the true leadership um, was cooperative. It mm -hmm. was yes. very feminine, yes. sort of, hey, let's communicate first, see what they want, see what they need. Which is actually... What can we do? Which is actually what a true leader does. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that brings us to that phrase at the end. To me, it does. Um, the and thing let me just mention real quick, him, since you were talking about alpha males, yeah. I wanted to also say our tr one of our true leaders is a female. The, the protagonist mm -hmm. of the film is a female, and she's trying to lead in spite of all these. I don't. I believe all the world leaders were male, if I'm mostly correct, or all, most are all them. male. And yeah. she, so she had to strive in their world to be cooperative. Mm -hmm. And she, remember the part at the beginning when they were trying to get her to come aboard the project, where he says, "Well, you translated this Farsi for us." And, and she, she pointed says, out, yeah, and look what you did to them. Yes. She does yes. You made quick work of those insurgents. She, yeah. She's like, you made quick work of that translation. She's and like, you made quick work of those insurgents. So her yes. work, it bothered her. Yes. That you could she tell it had a her. hand in these people presumably being killed, yeah. these insurgents, because she could translate their language. It makes you wonder, did she take this gig to try to avoid that in the future, you know? Probably, you know, or to get some did. sort of atonement for it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And we have to realize part of her, we will know later from the later part of the film, already knew this was happening mm -hmm. and was already mm -hmm. in this in this time spree stream in a nonlinear way, but we don't know that at the beginning. And and then there's that thing you were saying she said about to the Chinese leader? To him, yes. it was actually the words of his, his wife's dying words. It was yes. like the words of a woman... He was the one that was ready to just go and you know, blow them to smithereens. And would you give that translation because okay. it's not in the subtitles? It's not in the film. Um, it's in war, there are no winners, only widows. Yeah. So the quote is actually about women as well, about widows. Yeah. About widows. Kind of, she's trying to warn her husband, you know, don't be this man who makes all these widows. And that quotation may be setting up that di dichotomy between the the typical, the enculturated or stereotypical male and female mm -hmm. points of view. Yeah. And come to think of it, um, if, like, um, um, come to think of it with the, with the alien pair, like, if the humans did assign gender to them, um, well, they named them after Abbott and Costello, so they right. might have assigned them as both male, but mm -hmm. one of them um, might have been female as well. Sure. We don't know because 
agender alien squids. Right, yeah, they right. could have been asexual reproduction. Right. And, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. they could be from a planet with 63 genders or from a planet with none. We just don't really know. You know? Yeah. yeah. We are still bothered by the lack of heptapod gender. <laughs> <laughs> Not bothered by it, but just curious. Yes, we are. Right, we are yes. curious. We want more heptapod. <laughs> yes, yes. Hep Linguistics, gender, chemistry, all and sorts of things. More heptapods. Plushies. Yes, <laughs> plushies. Humans, exactly. I mean, to me, one part that stands out to us like humans are so messed up. How are we going to save them in the future? When we are so messed up, Be and because we're space orcs, I you want know to. What? I want to see what happens. I love next. that though because <laughs> she, you know, she had to to be a good leader. She had to defer to others. She had to use their knowledge, mm -hmm. their expertise. These leader, I mean, in a way, the true leaders in the film are also the heptopods, right? That are coming mm -hmm. back and saying, "Here's how we can help you. We want to give you this language. We want to give you this perspective." Right. And um, so they're showing their example mm -hmm. is true leadership yeah. is. You're not all powerful. You're not better than anybody else. You need our help, and then we'll need your help, and that's how it yeah. works. And I, that's great leadership because, mm -hmm. if as a true leader, if you're a narcissist, if you think you'll always be the leader, always be on top, you'll never mm -hmm. need help. That makes for a bad leader. And the ultimate um, test of leadership is sacrifice. Yes, which yes. Abbott does. Yes, um, saves the humans because. Uh, they know what's coming. You know they're going to be blown to smithereens if they don't shove them off the ship in time. And Abbott dies, and it's like you realize Abbott must have known that. Right. Would have had. They would have had to have known it way back. And so, saying, "Okay, yeah, I will go on this mission because it's so desperate." I mean, even though I'm yeah. going to die, that's like real. The ultimate test of leadership. There. Mm, and there's yeah. actually. Are you familiar with um, Abraham Lincoln and his foreshadowing, understanding that he would die? His, yeah, you know, his doppelganger. He understood, and he said that to several people. Wow. I just have a feeling I will die in office. And he had dreams about it, and even in one of them, one of his dreams, he's lying in state. And he asks, so he hears weeping in the White House, and he asks them, well, who's, died, who's dead in the White House? And they say it was the president. He was assassinated. Wow. And he said to someone, if it's my fate that I should be killed, so be it, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically. Yeah. Um, he believed he was where he needed to be and doing what he needed to do. And yeah, he did see that, that weird reflection in that glass mm -hmm. before he ever left Illinois. It's mm -hmm. documented that he saw a strange reflection and he took it as a premonition that he would have a full first term he'd be healthy but he would die in his second term wow. and that's exactly what happened so it's kind of a real world um look at yeah, sure. yeah. even though he knew in his heart of hearts what would happen to him the mission was more important and it makes you wonder sometimes if we have visions if we have omens does that come from ourselves in a nonlinear time stream from beyond death or some it's later part question. of life? Or, you know, that's a very interesting, you know, it's maybe a there's question. a part of us mm -hmm. that, that, that later on will enter a nonlinear time stream that's talking to ourselves before that happened. Because mm -hmm. once you enter that nonlinear time stream, then you can communicate with all aspects of your life. It basically changes your past. It changes your memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got to be hell on your hippocampus. <laughs> <laughs>